Bank of Canada Governor Stephen Pola says that while new mortgage rules are working the way they're supposed to and the quality of new loans continues to improve, he also is calling for the mortgage industry to offer more options to consumers. Evan Siddall is president and CEO of the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation. Thanks for being here. Delighted to be here. Yeah. So when you heard those remarks, is this an industry that hasn't innovated enough, in your view, in the face of some of the policy changes? Yeah, I think there's some of that. And we're talking about longer-term mortgages in Ottawa, but there are, there are restrictions in it. You can't, if you have longer than a five-year mortgage, then the prepayment penalty has limited to three months, so that makes it uneconomic for banks. Right. Banks also tend to fund with deposits. They're shorter than five years, and uh, they're only guaranteed to five years by CDIC, and so there's actually structural reasons why we can't do that. We have about in our securitization system something like 20% of our, uh, of our CMBs are at 10 years, so there's no structural limit there. When you, oh, you just did your assessment of the overall market, uh, things are getting a little bit better, the vulnerabilities better. are decreasing. Yeah. Just give me your kind of, the, the temperature you would give to where things stand versus where you'd like them to be. Lukewarm would be the temperature. Um, expectations, as the governor said the other day, have backed off. That's true for sure. Part of that's in response to policy actions that people may think are more important than they are. Um, you know, the governor also said that uh, the Vancouver market had rolled over before the um, before policy measures in, in BC were enacted. And I think people have extrapolated expectations in the marketplace. So we'll see how that um, evolves over time. What do you think, if anything, needs to happen here? We've heard calls that there needs to be more moves taken on housing affordability. We did get some, of course, in the, the federal budget. Let's actually back up because I haven't talked to you since then. What, is that, was that what you would have liked to have seen? I imagine you had a big hand in, the in it. In the federal budget? In the federal budget. Was there something else that could happen that didn't happen? Or could it we, have gone further? We looked at a bunch of different options. There were some, you know, people were looking for cuts in the stress test level, extended amortizations, all of which would have substantially impacted house, and pra house price inflation. Right. The first time home buyers incentive, which was the answer, will have, we think, an insignificant impact on prices. When you do the math, there are lots of people criticizing it. When you do the math, it's, it's really not going to have an upward effect on prices in our view. What is the current biggest vulnerability of the system? Indebtedness continues to be a It concern. is still indebtedness. It is still indebtedness among younger people yep. because people tend to default when they lose their jobs within the first or second year of a mortgage. So that's what we're worried about. And so along with that has come this question of where we are in the economic cycle, right? Right. You get the double whammy of job losses and uh, housing market that still needs to correct a little bit. You're thinking on that? We've, we've taken the R word off the table for the most part to, compared to a, a couple of months ago. Yeah, that's right. My, you know, my thinking is we're, we're, we're still vulnerable because we're so financially leveraged to anything that could happen, offshore, trade wars, et cetera, et cetera. And mm -hmm. we don't know what the next big thing's going to be. We do know that we have fewer arrows in our quiver to respond to it. We, you have called for a very ambitious goal on housing affordability yeah. uh, that every Canadian should be able to. It sounds like a cut. By 2030. By 2030, and you're going to raise private capital to do it. Just we are trying to raise private capital. What does We've, that look like? Well, we don't know. Um, what I do know is, you know, it's like Kennedy saying we'll be on the moon within 10 years. If you don't try to do it, and I'm no John Kennedy, but if you don't try to do something, you won't even get partway there. Right. And it's not enough for a crown corporation to say, we'll take the government's money and do what the government wants us to do. We have a bunch of people who can do more. And so we're aspiring to do more. And when we talk about affordability, what's on the list? Because we saw the recent provincial government in Ontario make changes to the pace, uh, we think, the, the rate at which homes might get built. But will they be the right kind of homes? Will they be rental? Will they be low income? And these are all kind of the questions. Are you talking about that kind of thing, targeting areas? Yeah, we're talking about uh, feder the federal government, which is back in the housing game now as a result of the national housing strategy, having withdrawn in the 90s. Provinces, certainly, which have the lion's share of that responsibility, municipalities as well, and working together. Um, it's yeah, more is more in terms of housing. We need more supply. We need very specific types of supply, right? Well, we do, but housing's a continuum, and so and you can be in balance certainly. But for now, we need more of every type. Of almost every type. So if we in talk, places like Toronto and Vancouver, if we talk about the precarious housing, uh, the need <clears> for more <throat> rental, are there are there mechanisms that you could use this private capital for to encourage the building of? those types of housing units? Yeah, we have a program that was uh, substantially expanded in the last budget by $10 billion and extended in term from five to nine years. That's part of our answer to it, but we have an infrastructure at CMHC that, you know, for example, Microsoft is investing in housing for its employees in Seattle. Big employers here could do the same thing. There are, there are concerns about the affordability of places like Toronto and Vancouver 
And CEOs are thinking, gee, should I move to Mississauga? Should I move to Abbotsford? Well, if they invest in housing, they don't have to do that. It, there have been criticisms about the first time home buyers initiative. Um, you've seen them. Tim Hudak has, has, has been quite vocal about this. What's your response to those criticisms? That it really that it doesn't go far enough, that it's a nice idea, but it's not doing as much as it could. It is deliberately designed to be a surgical response to people being excluded from the market. And so because it's a marginal program, people are being excluded at the margin, mm -hmm. it's targeted right there. And if it were much larger, Amanda, it would have an inflationary effect. Our estimate is that across the country it will have a 0.02 to 0.04 percent maximum impact on house prices. It's not. It's not inflationary. Can you test all that when you <clears throat> when you think through policies? Uh, can you test in advance, like model whether they will have a, an effect on price? You don't want to. You want to stay neutral all the time. You want to do your best to try and test it, but you know there's behavioral assumptions. Mm -hmm. We're using 2018 data. That that data set excluded a bunch of people who, whom this could attract. We don't really know. But we do our best because we've got to give advice to ministers based on the evidence we have. Would you like to see certain markets cool further than they have? We still have, of course, uh, Vancouver obviously not necessarily done what you might have expected. Even Toronto still feels in some yeah. ways frothy. On the one hand, I would. On the other hand, what's behind it is economic growth and job growth and, and immigration. Yeah. And that's good for these cities. So. Uh, the fundamentals are good fundamentals. In a sense, it's a high-class problem. But yeah, we need cheaper housing in this country. We, when we think about just from a kind of a big-picture policy point of view, the reason, of course, that your job, your, this role is so important is because housing is fundamental, right? Yeah. It matters to all of us. It matters that it be good. It matters that it be safe. It's become a massive economic issue. It's become a it huge sure part has. of our economy. Yeah. Are we getting it slightly wrong in letting it be that important? In other words, this notion that people should be able to buy a home. Oh. Uh, in many cities of the world, they rent happily forever for life. That's uh, exactly right. And, there, and I mentioned behavioral issues. Mm -hmm. You know, in places like Paris and Sydney and Hong Kong, Buenos Aires, New people York. rent. Yep. Yeah, New York. People rent. Whereas here, we glorify home ownership, and we think it's the only vehicle for savings. Well. That's, that's looking at the last hundred years. And unfortunately, savings are in the future, not in the past. And I think, you know, this party ultimately comes to an end, and the people who are going to get hurt are young people. And so that's why the first time home buyers incentive is deliberately meant to help them without pushing prices even higher. So it, it reads well, right, to say we're helping young people buy homes, we're helping middle class families, you know, upgrade their homes so that those homes become available. One point that Tim Hudak made is in an election year, the campaign that managed to position this issue in the center is going to have some success. People care deeply about this issue. How much does that worry you, that it becomes a politicized issue where the policy takes a backseat to the politics? My, you know, I think good housing policy, we have this conversation at CMHC all the time. Yes. You know, how will we be, in, we be influenced by the change in the election? Our job is to give the best advice and to give yeah, the, the line in Ottawa is fearless advice and loyal execution. And I think we've given good advice on this. And I think it's sustainable across the political spectrum because housing is so important to Canadians. You have raised the issue of supply that mm -hmm. municipalities and others need to get get the supply side lined up uh, because that's a big part of the issue. What about the banks and the role that they play and the risk that they should be exposed to to keep their behavior where we want it to be? We looked at lender risk sharing a number of years ago as a way to implicate them. Yeah. Um, uh, it turns out that idea has, a, has been shelved for a while. And the truth is that we have a bit of an on the one hand, on the other hand solution in Canada. Mortgage insurance makes our system more resilient. Mm -hmm. It means that if there is a housing correction, our banks will be somewhat insulated from that. On the other hand, it takes them out of the game. Now, they're in there a little bit. They have to have capital aside from some of these mortgages. Yep. I would like, but I haven't found the magic bullet to actually implicate lenders, our best risk managers, yep. in that adjudication of, of risk of What's housing. What's the best risk. way to do it? Well, lender risk sharing was an idea, certainly. Yes. Um, uh, Are there other ways we should be yeah, exploring? We could look at risk-based pricing in, in securitization, um, and we've, we're doing a little bit of work on that over the long term. We don't have a ton of time, but uh, interest-only mortgage payments seem to be creeping back into this market. Is that a concern that we need to, to flag and be mindful that of? That is a concern, yeah. I mean, people... The, the amortizing mortgages are, are mortgages that build up equity in themselves, and the more leverage people have, and interest-only mortgages make you have more leverage, the fewer degrees of freedom we have to deal with things that we just don't know are coming. Great to have you here. Great to be here. Evan Siddall, President and CEO of Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation.